Hello. In this video, I'm going to be making another mold so that I can make a carbon fiber part using this plug. This is all set to, to make a mold. I'm gonna get started with applying the gel coat. All right, well that is the first layer of gel coat down. Uh, that's gonna be the outer shell, so that's a uh, tooling, you know, a harder gel coat. I'm gonna do a second layer of gel coat, which is gonna be a standard marine grade uh, white gel coat. And uh, it's cheaper, and also being white, it'll give me an indication when I'm repairing the outer layer, because I know I'm gonna have to, uh, that I've gone too deep. And so already I've got some mistakes as is the case with composite work. Uh, let's see, this time, what I got are these little, like, voids and bubbles in there. And it's in two of the corners, so it's in that corner and it's in that corner. Well, always seems to happen. Something always seems to go wrong. So that is gonna be a repair that needs to be done from the outside of the mold, which is a pain in the butt, but I'm gonna try to fill it from this side, so. What I'm going to do is I've got my marine gel coat, I've got my catalyst, and I've got some silica. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix what I need to spray. I'm gonna put a small amount in the silica, and then I'm just gonna to try to uh, smear it in, kind of push it into the little holes that I got. So hopefully that'll work out. Uh, the goal is to not have to repair the gel coat layer when the mold comes out of the plug, but that seems to be like a common thing. So odds are I'm gonna to have to do a repair to it, but we'll see. So here it goes, second layer gel coat. to fiberglass. See if I got her stuck. She's giving me a little bit of trouble, but it's coming out. Uh, PVA is water soluble. And so if it gets a little sticky, there it goes. Ah, there we go. Yes. Ooh. All right, that is out and it almost looks good, but as is the case with composites and all the molds I've done so far, there's always a mistake and it's always a different problem, even though the process doesn't change, which I'm struggling to deal with. In this one, the corners that bubbled up, uh, what's happened is the PVA 
when I sprayed it on, it, it migrated away from the corners. And so this gel coat hasn't cured. And that is because the mold is sealed. So this mold is sealed with epoxy. And there's like some chemical magic going on between epoxy and polyester gel coat where when polyester gel coat is in contact with epoxy, it will not cure. The beauty is I think the corners will probably be easier to fix than uh, you know the, the large surfaces. So I'm gonna fix this and that's gonna push back making a part by a week. And so I'll tune back in when I'm ready to make a part. I am ready to make a part. I have got the mold fixed. I've spent a little bit of time uh, recoding the edges, cleaning them up, sanding them down, polishing them up. Uh, this thing may look immaculate on camera, but there are a number of problems. Let's see, little defects all over the places, some outside the part, some inside the part. I'm not really gonna sweat that because this panel is going to end up underneath the seat of the co-pilot. So no sense in going crazy with perfection on this one. But because I'm ready to make part, I can now start the free coat release agent process. So I will seal this, I will put the mold release agent on it, and then I can do the gum tape, the carbon fiber stack, the bagging, the consumables, and do an infusion. So here I go, I'm gonna get started. So let's have a look. Uh, basically what I've got here is a lot of bunching up on the corners. Right, just about every corner has some form of it. I think down here, this is just the flow media, but there that's definitely down to the carbon fiber stack. And basically what I was trying to do was reduce the amount of spray tack that I was using when building the carbon fiber stack. So this stuff when you spray it on will occupy space that the epoxy can't get to and if that space is on the surface of the mold you'll have these little I guess uh, voids left behind because once you clean off the part afterwards 
it removes the glue and exposes the void. So I've been trying to use a lot less of that. I had that happen a lot on the front floor area, used way too much of it. Here, I was trying to use the least amount possible and then rely on the bag to kind of press the carbon fiber into position rather than gluing it. <laughs> what that's done is it's allowed the carbon to kind of bundle up in the corners because it wasn't, you know, as tight as it could have been on the mold. So anyway, that's going to be, you know, a visual defect on the back side of the part, which I'm not really worried about. The next part I do, I'm gonna to have to play around with how much of this I use, or I'm gonna to have to find a product uh, that actually uh, gets integrated into the final part. Anyway, here I go. Let's have a look at what's going on. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got good infusion going. I don't have any rips or tears in the bag, so no like air pocket lines. I pretty much got all the air bubbles out of the feed line, so those are now at the top, which means I should have a pretty wet infusion with no air pockets and no dry spots in the final part. Uh, again, I'm doing the corners with no flow media, because I did have a bag pierce a hole on one of those. This corner is pretty difficult to get the flow media around, so kind of worked around that a little bit. Uh, let's come to the vacuum side. So vacuum side right here. Uh, in the past, I've done spiral tubing, kind of where I want it to go. Um, but here I've got this interesting feature right here in the tube. You know, it couldn't follow the part there, so I put three layers of the flow media in right here. So I'm using this as kind of the vacuum area. And then this is my brake. Uh, so once the resin comes up to here, it'll slow down and it'll allow this line to get caught up before it brings it in. And hopefully I can do that without sucking resin into my catch can and my pump. Right, this has been baking in my oven for about eight hours and it is time to open it up. It's like Christmas. Wow, I put on a sweat doing that one. This sequence of the whole process has got to be my favorite part. I, I don't know what it is about pulling the part off the mold and seeing what I got that excites me, but hey, that's, uh, that's just me. So if you're ready, here we go. And then I don't know what it is that I did this time, but this thing pulled right off the mold. I mean, without like any issues. Ooh, look at that. I got a little wonky up there, but no bother. 
That's got to be lighter than the one little aluminum panel. This whole thing. Cool. So, let's see what we got. We've got the 45 streaks from the uh, release agent. That'll buff right out. I've got... I don't know, some minor defects in the cloth. No big deal. The Kevlar cloth that I got on here is like really difficult to work with. So of course it's in the one spot that's gonna be above the seat, right? But hey, that is what it is. This is three layers. I was gonna do two, but I did three. And I think I could go two on the sides and then just go three or four on the bottom depending where the structure is, of course. All the corners look really good. Man, I would say that is an overall success. I've got some dry spots here that didn't get wetted out in the infusion. I kind of uh, cut it off maybe a little bit too early, but those will get trimmed off. And you know what? There is no trimming on this needed to get it fit up into the airframe. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's uh, let's see what this looks like. <laughs> I honestly don't know what my favorite part is. Taking the part off the mold or when the part just fits right in to where it's supposed to go. That is as good as it gets. All right, so I'll have to put maybe a couple screws in. I'll need to cut these out for the seat. All right, I've got to trim that. I got to trim around the front. I left this tall because I don't know where the seaplane doors are gonna, where the threshold's gonna go for the seaplane doors. Uh, this guy I'm gonna cut and match up to, of course, carbon fiber floor in the back. And a flange there will give it a little bit more a little bit more stiffness. So I didn't need to put the foam in like I did for the front. But I'm also, no, I'm good. I just made the cut there with the dry carbon. So that is freaking exciting. One and two more to go. I am just so excited about this. I don't know why. It has been a long time since my front floor was done. What I've had is a growing family. I had a huge house renovation project come up that took a lot of time. And then any number of different things come up as is the case with any builder. Things get in the way, they gotta be done. But I kind of feel like I'm getting a little more momentum again for like a second wind and hopefully I can keep that going. So the next item on the list is for me gonna be underneath the pilot seat and then I'm doing the rear floor. So hopefully no more big projects in my way. The family isn't growing for now and I should be back on it. See you next time.